in May. The Central Bank of Nigeria raised its benchmark interest rate to 13% to curb rising inflation. But the Lagos Chamber of Commerce uh, said that uh, the rate hike alone will not curb inflationary pressures. The Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry advised the Central Bank of Nigeria to roll out more friendly supply side policies to boost productive sectors. We have joining us virtually uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, the Chief Executive Officer of, fi of uh, the Finance uh, with Mukhtar. He joins us from Lagos via Skype. Thank you for joining us, Mukhtar, this morning. Always a pleasure. Good morning. All right. Now, I mean, at least we can say that uh, it's been weeks since this decision by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Are we seeing the light at the end of the tunnel? No, not really. Uh, it's, um, I think we won't see that light so soon because like the Lagos Chambers of Commerce just said in, 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 during your introduction, um, there are a lot of policies that is just beyond um, uh, hiking in rig that need to be taken care of before we begin to see that downward trend. And one of those uh, challenges that we have is uh, the rising costs in terms of uh, standard of living, especially in areas of goods and services. And um, we, where, where Nigeria, we don't have power. We've seen the, the rising costs in, 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 in gas, especially gas and diesel, which are what most of these uh, manufacturers use. So I won't see those uh, impact in the short term, but in the long term, if we begin to put some of those um, right policy in place to governize the SMEs and to governize small uh, uh, companies, we might begin to see um, light. But again, we must not forget that um, it's a global issue. It's not just a Nigerian issue any longer. Uh, all over the world, they are coupling with one form of inflation or the other. Mm -hmm. So government, central bank all over the world are hiking rates. But again, um, that is for the monetary policy side. You hike the rate, then the physical side begin to look for soft landing, especially for the citizens to be able to uh, enhance their purchasing power. You see um, the, the United States of America doing that in the area of cut, cutting off um, uh, petroleum tax. You see uh, uh, even the uh, United, United Arab Emirates did that yesterday, also trying to do tax, um, a cash transfer to more vulnerable uh, in, 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 in the society. And also you see Saudi Arabia also doing that yesterday, also seeing how they can meet those new verbs. So those are the only ways that you can see um, policy like hiking interest rate begin to um, get the kind of result, especially when the physical side are able to do what they ought to do, especially in, in enhancing the earning power of the citizen. Mukhtar, which brings us to the same thing that happened shortly after the, the interest rate was hiked. There were a lot of, a lot of experts uh, raised concerns at that time that the fact that other countries were raising their hike, their interest didn't mean that Nigeria had to. And, there, and what they said at that time was that Nigeria needed to look inward to, to look at solutions that could tackle our peculiar situation. Now you've mentioned some countries and what they are doing. Apart from the hike, what else is Nigeria doing? Because we don't see any other thing. Well, uh, we're doing a lot. I mean, the CBN is trying as much as they think they can do. Um, if you look at uh, before now, um, they have trying to XR 200, whereby they want to encourage Nigerians to import their goods and services outside to be able to boost foreign earnings in the economy of over $200 billion. Um, again, if if you talk about, oh, are we supposed to do something? Are we not supposed to go? The world has become a global village. And uh, what is happening now is not, has um, any Nigeria has any control over it? Is what is happening in, in, in Russia and Ukraine and is what is um, affecting the world all over. So with the hike of interest rate, I think is the right policy because again, it should have been done earlier. I, I keep saying it should have been done earlier because the stand of intervention, we saw the CBN intervening in SMEs um, by um, by doing a lot of liquidity into the system. You know that you are trying to flee inflation at that time. They should have been a hiking rate. Now, what are Nigerians doing? We have done 
Uh, what Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates are doing at the moment, we did it. I mean, we, we've trained the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs saying that they've been cash transferred to the most vulnerable of 5,000, between 5,000 Naira to the most vulnerable Nigerians. But unfortunately, because we don't have those data to know who are the, really the most vulnerable Nigerians, compared to them that they don't have those data, they look at your earning, they look at what you earn, they look at where you stay, but in Nigeria, we don't have those data. So you can begin to see what they are doing. But again, what they are doing is relative to the kind of result they are doing. Because when you have a structural decay, then you don't begin to see those results. And some of the structural decay boils down to lack of policy directions. And also not because of lack of political will and politics politicking also in the economy, because when you talk about this cash transfer in some states that are not controlled by the government in the center, seems to be complained that they don't have such cash transfer to their own less vulnerable. So it seems to become a political issue. And you remember before now, before the last election, the, the vice president was going around and doing what we call uh, 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 trader money to give traders. Up to this moment, we don't know what has become of trader money because we expected that money. Remember that Bacha loot also was brought into the system and it was said that it was going to be used for the less vulnerable in terms of cash transfer to them. All this policy has been done, but because there's no sincerity on the part of governance and we don't have those data to see these are the number of people that have received this cash transfer and this is what it has helped in enhancing their life. We are not seeing the result. We've seen that the government is trying to do what we call the, um, the, the school feeding, whereby they say they have to feed children in school. Up to now, we are not seeing those results because we don't have data to back up that so, such amount of money and where are these schools that, where are, these schools that are being fed. So it has to do a lot with structure. Mukhtar, it is true that uh, all of these policies, we saw them trade our money and all of that. But uh, you, would also, you would agree with me that a lot of people are still in poverty. A lot of people are living below poverty line at the moment. And we have had disruptions in agriculture, in manufacturing, and all of that. What can be done at this point to, to, to change the narrative? No, I'm, I'm not well, asking awesome. for a long-term effect. In the, in the in, meantime, in, what can be done? In the meantime, yes. I think what should be done is government should begin to see how they can enhance the earning capability of Nigerians, whatever. I mean, they need to look into that. How can we put money in the hands of Nigeria? How can we begin to help them in some areas? But the government will tell you that we're already doing that in subsidy. Remember, <laughs> recently the president said that is their own palliative to the people. That's why they will not remove subsidy. But you know that subsidy for itself is favoring the rich less more than the, 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 than the poor because as it stands now, the cost of transportation has gone high, and yet the poor are the ones that are bearing that cost because the rich are still driving their car. So the only challenge they have is to queue in the filling station to get their home for it. But they still buy 165 naira and they still go the distance they want to go. But for the poor, the cost of, uh, of transportation has gone up. So it is, not, it, it is not doing them any good. So most of those money that would have been found to galvanize the economy, especially in the area of job creation, are not finding their ways to this. So what do we have to do as a government? We need to look at innovative ways to begin to touch our people directly. And if we want to do that, then we need to look from the local government up. But uh, like I say, it's a structural problem. Once you have a structural problem, it's a big, big, big problem that cannot be, you can't see the result the way you, you want to see. But if you ask me what the government should do, increase the earning capability of every Nigeria. Begin to see how you can bring up cushioning in some of the challenges that the Nigerians are facing, because that's what all the economy in the world are doing at this moment. They are trying to look at how can we help our people? How can we bring the cost of living down for them? How can we begin to see the cost of food items goes down? How can we see transportation go down? How can we see uh, job creation? Do we begin to... So those are things that the government should do. And like I said, no, uh... these are not things that should be done by the monetary policy. These okay. are things that should be done by the physical side. Okay, Mutar. You know, the thing is, no matter how much intervention government is going to make, at the end of the day, there's still something that defines the Nigeria's economy. You know, the issues of forex, the issue of foreign exchange. Today, we are still talking about the dollar at about more than, you know, 600 naira. And you know that largely, uh, we depend heavily on imports and all of that. So how how can can we balance this really 
because at the end of the day, if we do not checkmate that, whatever the intervention that government is going to make is still going to you know, be watered down by the effects of uh, the forex. Exactly, exactly. Effect is a, is a, is a big challenge. And um, for us to address the effect challenge, we need to attract efforts into the economy. We need to see foreign direct investment come into the economy. We need to see Nigerians make do of mostly made goods that are produced here in Nigeria. Um, and you know that that's, those are not things that can be addressed in the short term. The CBN have come up with all uh, policy trying to see how they can attract effects into the economy. It's not yielding the desired result yet. Even the hike in interest rate was also due to the fact that they want to attract foreign portfolio investors, especially in the fixed income space, so that by that time they will begin to come in because of the kind of hike in, in interest rate that would now favor fixed income space. But yet, we are not seeing those foreign investors coming because of the, like you pointed out, the exchange rates. They be, we don't have a uniform exchange rate. We have the, the market determining exchange rate or the CBN determining exchange rate, which is the import export market. And then we have the parallel market rate, which is about 600 and something. And we have the CBN, which has gone as, as $425, naira for dollar. So we have not been able to ad address that. So we are not seeing that um, desire result. Um, in the short term, I don't think we'll be able to address the effects, especially with the crisis that we have. We would have been able to address that if, for instance, we are not putting so much money into forest subsidy, because that means Nigeria would have been any more in the area of um, 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 petroleum uh, refined, I mean, even crude oil by this time. But we, we don't, we, 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 because we don't, our refineries are not refining enough for us to consume here in Nigeria. So what we gain in terms of price in the crude higher, high rate in crude oil price, we lose in the price of refined petroleum product and in the same of subsidy scheme that we are we are presently uh, getting, we are presently doing as a government. So um, that has not helped in terms of attracting efforts. Uh, you remember the state governors have, com have complained that for the past six months, the NMPC have done zero allocation, zero allocation to the federation account. So those are bigger challenges that cannot be addressed in the short term. But then how do we address it? We need to see how we can begin to attract foreign direct investors. Okay, uh, Mukhtar, when you're talking about, I mean, the foreign uh, exchange uh, rate, I was just thinking about it. For us to, to get uh, for, Forex, we need to produce so that we can export. Now, what is our production rate in the country at the moment with insecurity in most part of the country which has disrupted agriculture and all of that you know you i think you asked the question and uh, somehow you gave you, you, you have you have provided the answer insecurity and then when we are produce, producing even when we are trying to produce the cost of production is very very high because of um, uh, we have to provide power for ourselves the infrastructure is bad so the cost of transportation of those goods are, are now more expensive so those are the major major challenges that we are facing it's not because um, nigerian companies are not producing remember that we still have dangote is still producing cement and exporting cement to neighboring countries we still have um, um, if you look at the what we saw from the nigerian and Bureau of Statistics realized that um, uh, um, the non-oil sector has contributed more to the GDP than even the oil sector, despite the high, uh, the high price in crude oil prices. But again, the challenge why we are not seeing those results is because of the high cost of production. The high cost of production is as a result of the infrastructural challenge, especially in the area of power. So, and then in the, like you said, insecurity also is playing a key role, especially in the, in, in, in the agricultural sector, whereby we should be thinking of how we can feed ourselves. Up to this moment, the government might pride itself that we are, we are, we are now uh, um, trying to improve local consumption in rice production. But you and I know that even with that, we've not been able to meet local demand. That's why our, our type of productivity in the, in, in, in the agricultural sector, especially the rice side. So it's, it, it, it's, it's something that they need to address. And the CBN, I said again, are trying to do what they can. They are doing direct intervention in the Texas, uh, Texas uh, sector. They have done direct intervention in the, in the, in the, in, in the rice uh, farming area. They are not thinking of doing direct intervention in terms of provision of funds for SMEs that can attract, like I said in, the, in my introduction, XR200. But all these policies 
will be of no effect if the monetary, if the physical side are not doing their own part, especially in the cost of doing the, 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 the cost of doing business uh, um, taxation infrastructure. Once they are not doing that, they, they, the CBN will not see the desired result of whatever monetary policy they are trying to implement. All right, now, uh, well, for us uh, in the FCT, uh, quickly I would like to get your take on something, a new policy by the FCTA now for, you know, car parks and gardens to close uh, by 7 p.m. Uh, and that, you know, took effect from yesterday. Uh, so, so far, uh, people in that value chain are already, you know, feeling the brunt of that. What's your take on that, uh, such policies? My such policy, if you ask the FCC administration, is, is as regard of security. They must have gotten a security report, and that's why they are trying to do that now. And again, if what we, what we read in the news is anything to go by just this morning, the the, the attack on Kuje prison. So it calls for um, life to be secure. I'm sure that's why the FCT, uh, um, FCT are, are coming up with this policy. And that's why we are saying that uh, for an economy to strive, there must be peace and security. Once there's no peace and security, an economy cannot strive. So what it's implied now that most of the people that end their living in that space are not going to lose their job because the kind of income there. So most of the companies will not be able to pay them again because they are not generating the, the income, knowing that guard, uh, 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 parks and, uh, and, and guarding makes their money in the evening. So once they are not there any longer, so that sector is, is gradually dying. So it has to be that we need to do something about our security. We need to fix our security as soon as possible. Well, if you look at that, you know, some will say, are there no other options, you know, to look at, you know, how this will be implemented? Because, I mean, we've had the COVID-19 lockdown experience, and now we are having, I mean, the issues of security in Nigeria is not something that you say it's going to end next week or next two weeks or, or next three weeks and all that. So what now then happens to the operators in that value chain? Uh, you see, security of life and property is the most um, valuable asset. I mean, lives are more important than um, than anything because it's only when there is life there could be business. So I think, uh, like I said, the FCT are trying to see how they can begin to manage security challenges. I'm sure they are going to come up with strategy. I don't expect this to last too long. I, I, I think they are looking at the security apparatus. I believe so. I don't know, but I think they should be looking at the security apparatus because that value chain creates a lot of uh, revenue for most people in the FCT and not just revenue for FCT also, revenue also for, for I mean, income also for, for the people of FCT. I think they, they definitely we need to look at that and see how they can come up with strategies on how to implement. You, you know that the, the security apparatus in Nigeria are stretched, and so they might not be able to cope. So maybe they need to come up with strategy. Maybe we have some, some time, we have some pack open for a longer period whereby security is breached on those areas. Just trying to manage the situation, well, make sure that we have adequate security put in place. Mokhtar, some economic experts, just like yourself, have said that this policy will only uh, end up in tightening an already tightened, it will further tighten an already tightened economy and that it is not good for anybody. <laughs> Look, as it is now, um, everybody's tightening is, is, is bad everywhere in the world. So we, we need to tighten our beds also. But it's not good for anybody, but that is what we are. But that is where, where it is now. In every economy in the world, we need to, if you look at the United States, they are complaining, you look at UK, they are complaining, European, they are, European Union, they are complaining, Asia, they are complaining, Middle East, everywhere. It's, it's, it's a global challenge. It's more or less like a global recession, though we've not gone to that to say that the world is suffering from global recession. There must be tightening for us to move forward, but then the government need to come up with a cushioning effect because all government all over who are doing tightening, but there are areas that they need to cushion it from the people. What's, what stop government from saying that from, from now ends for them, civil servant, uh, you, you are not going to pay tax. Just reduce their tax. I mean, the number of tax they pay in terms of their income tax. I mean, what where will you tax them over? Reduce some of the value added tax that you have added in goods and services so that these goods and services. So those that's what we are talking about. 
Government need to be innovative. Tax itself is another way whereby government are innovative to attract investors and not just to attract investors, to address the challenges of their people. But you know, Nigeria, because of the high debt burden on the area of the government, the government, as it stands now, is not ready to take a bite on any of its revenue. And that is why the tightening is biting harder in Nigeria than any other part of the world. When you go on, uh, on, t on TV, all you see is countries are talking about the inflation in, uh, all you hear in the news is inflation in various countries and what the governments of those countries are doing to tackle the inflation. In Nigeria, would you say that Nigeria's government is responding as actively as it should to the situation? <laughs> no, no, they are not. I think they are confused, especially. They are confused, the fiscal side, they are confused. They, they don't have a direct policy. They are not addressing any of this inflation. Rather, we are seeing that they are putting more burden on the people because we went government all over the world lighting the bad burden on the people in the bottom and the middle class. And in Nigeria, if you go to the Nigerian government, yes, just still the Port Authority are in, in, in increasing tariff in cars that are in 20, 2000 to 2013. And those are the cars that ordinary Nigerians will be able to afford, so they can't afford those cars any longer. Cost of transportation has gone up, they cannot manage that. Also. So if you look at that with most policies that the government are doing, they are not in any way in, in right to what is happening all over the world. That, and that's the unfortunate situation that we find ourselves now. And not to forget that governance is already taking the back seat. All we hear about now is politicking for 2023. Now, finally, uh, Mokhtar, you know, what we've talked about seems like a hopeless situation. What's the way out? i give you an example. The Nigerian reserve dropped, you know, by uh, one point, you know, I, I think one billion dollars thereabout. What does this portend in terms of managing, you know, uh, Forex as well? Well, um, we've been really managing our forex very well. Um, if you ask them about the one billion that have dropped, about 300 million were used for debt servicing. Then the other ones they will tell you is either one or two things that they're doing. And we, like I said in your program before, there's no sincerity in the FX policy any longer. Before we used to have it, a weekly report on how much we're giving to Peru the change and how much was used by government. But now, in the after the, the only thing we know about is the $300 million that we use in our debt services. Then after that, there's nothing again. Then rather what we are seeing is that we are seeing people being given uh, BTA, basic traveling allowance, BTA is what most people are, 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 are enjoying at the moment. So, and then payment of school fees, which you and I know, they are the ones that benefited more when it comes to this payment of school fees. So, it, 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 there's no transparency in the FX region as it stands. And so, we'll continue to see our reserve during good, especially when we are not attracting more into the reserve. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mukhtar Mohammed, the Chief, Exec Chief Executive Officer of finance with Mokhtar. Thank you for joining us.